today is Tuesday and I'm at home today. It's a two hour drive for me in and out of DC so I'm trying to go every other day. I still have some footage from yesterday that I haven't posted yet. I've been having problems with my um, uploading program and uh, I keep getting server errors on YouTube so I'll be lucky if I get this posted. But I just wanted to address a few things with you. Um, as far as my update and view on what's going on in DC with Operation American Spring. There are some very good, strong, dedicated patriots there. And they're really not sure what to do. And they're not sure how to do it. There's a lot of protests that I've seen in the past and that I've been a part of, such as Occupy Congress several things to do with Ron Paul <clears throat> where I saw much higher turnout I would say that the people that came to those protests were more like myself it's one of the things that was part of their soul is activism so I know that those people that are like me will eventually find their way to come to DC if they see that what we're doing is a part of their cause. So I'm not even going to address those people right now. I'm going to address everybody else. The reason why we're in DC seems to be a confused message right now based on what I'm seeing with some of the comments in my videos and what I'm hearing from other people. It's not a Tea Party rally. It's not a supremacist rally. It's not a right-wing extremist Republican rally. I live in a country where when I was a child, I was told that one of our favorite mottos in this country, and something we firmly believed in, was no man left behind. In other words, every American citizen could count on every other American citizen, whether they were brothers and sisters in battle, on the field, traveling abroad, or within our own home states. No matter what, we had each other's back against the world. I've grown up and I see a country where some of our fellow citizens in an embassy are not only attacked, but drugged through the streets and raped with cattle prods in some of the most vicious, vile manners while some of our military is telling us that they were ready to go in, but they were given stand-down orders. And whenever it's brought to light and questioned, why were these men left to die alone in Benghazi? Christopher Stevens, what happened to that man's body after all the good, positive work he did? I can't imagine being his mother. were responded to with what difference does it make? Hey guys, I've got a question for you. What if that was your body out there? What if that was your child? Another question I have is, do you remember back when Benghazi happened? There was a gentleman who was arrested for making a YouTube video that was in his mind a comic relief against the Muslims. Everything was blamed on him and he was put in jail. And we now know that it wasn't his video, his YouTube video, that caused Christopher Stevens and the people that were with him to die. Has anybody heard where this man's at? Is he still in jail? Was he released? What's happened to him? These are the things that make a difference to me. I grew up in a country where the IRS was who you paid your taxes to, no matter if you were Democrat, Republican, liberal, independent, rich, poor, in between, small or big. And now I myself am going through audits with the IRS at levels I've never experienced before after I donated to the Ron Paul campaign. And what comes out to light that the IRS actually tap targeted people of certain political parties. I don't care if you're in their party or not. If you let it happen to one political party, 
It'll happen to your political party as soon as they disagree with you, too. Do you not get that? I'm living in a country where I sit around every day, all day long, and all over social media, I hear my fellow Americans bitching and crying and complaining, and somebody's got to do something. And when somebody does something, all you've got the time to do then is get on channels like mine and use curse words and call me names and sit on your little couch. There's a lot of people out there that would love to be in D.C., but they can't get there. To you all, and I know who most of you all are that are in my subscription list, please keep fighting the social media fight for us. This is never going to get any media attention from mainstream or even from the Alex Joneses of the world until they see how serious we really are and that we really are still here. We're not going home. I know just because one big YouTuber, and God bless him for being there, he did an excellent job, but because he went home now everybody thinks it's over. And you have small channels like mine that are trying desperately to show you it's not over. We're still here. I'm working with a half-broken computer, no video programs, I'm piecing things together because the guys that do this, the alternative media, they're not there. Alex Jones, you scream every day at all of your subscribers, a million people every week, that we need a revolution and we need to band together and we need to stick up and fight. Where are you? I get the fact that there's not 50,000 people here today, but you know what? It's people like you that could have led them here. But you've ignored us. You have done exactly what you point at the mainstream media for doing. We're trying to listen to what Glenn Beck says. Get up and stand up and fight. Where are all the fighters? I'm standing there in a group of people of disabled veterans in wheelchairs walking with canes and there's nobody there that's got feet that are capable of marching because you're too busy sitting at home criticizing those of us and calling people like me tea baggers. I've never been a member of the Tea Party, okay? I voted Democrat half of my life. Each election, I choose how I'm voting based on the candidate. I'm just hearing a lot of criticism from a lot of people that have been talking a lot of big talk. And like I said, there are good people out there that are watching, that have been watching, that just can't get here, whether it's financial, medical, whatever. This is long term, this is ongoing. Maybe eventually we can get you here, but in the meantime, keep fighting the social media fight for us, please. To the rest of you all, I'm hearing people that are going on slamming us because it's a peaceful protest and they're not going to waste their time if it's not an armed takeover. Well, get your ass in gear and organize what you want and get out here to D.C. I could care less if we have two dozen different rallies going on for the same causes I, whatever. And you know what? It's a completely invalid argument because OAS was always designed to have three waves. The first wave is submitting the paperwork to the officials in Congress and the Senate to give them an opportunity to choose what side they're on and to raise awareness. Wave two is up to you guys that are sitting at home bitching about us. Where are you? Get organized. I'm going back up there tomorrow. And I'm going to go again at least every other day when I can. I do have to work through the weekend, so I'll be one of the weekday protesters, which is good because the weekends obviously are a little bit more crowded. I hear that there's bikers coming in this weekend that we should expect a few thousand on Friday. However, I also was told that there was 200 that showed up while I was standing there looking around, didn't know where they were at. And another thing, I've been walking back to my car twice now and I've met people that were with um, Operation American Spring, but they were on the other end of the mall. They couldn't find anybody. There were two groups, three groups of 50 to 200 people and they didn't know where each other was go towards the Capitol building. If you're standing at the Washington Monument, put it to your back, walk towards the Capitol building. Not all the way down, but there's a refreshment stand in front of the National Air and Space Museum. We're there. That's where we're at, so that the Capitol can see us. So that's my update for today. 
you got Fast and Furious, you've got a government that has given guns that they've taken from us. Maybe they were drug people, whatever. But I know of a few guns that were confiscated off of terms and conditions that were not qualified as what you've been told on the news. They've been put in the hands of drug cartel members who have turned around and shot our own border agents. That doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat or liberal or independent or constitutional or Tea Party. You got children going to school that are being sent home because they chewed a Pop-Tart into an L-shape and they said it was a gun. You got children that are being sent home because they wore the American flag on their t-shirts. This is America. If it offends you, don't live here. Mexico will be more than happy to take you. Canada, probably not at this point. If I was Canada, I'd be shutting my borders. You've got people on every side of the spectrum who are demanding answers, who see that something's wrong, who know that it's not, it's nothing tolerable. And we're tolerating it. And the world is laughing at us. And then you're turning around and laughing at us, too, instead of getting off your ass and organizing something. If you can't make it to D.C., do social media. If you can't do the social media or you want to be more active than that, fine. Start something in your state. Your county. Just even in your county. Put a dozen people together in front of the courthouse. Ask the question, what about Benghazi? What about the IRS targeting? What about Fast and Furious? What about our national debt at $17 trillion, a debt that you as an individual will never be able to repay? And now you want $15 an hour to flip burgers. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You better figure out how to pay that debt because the inflation is going to skyrocket so high that those people that are homeless and that can't be fed and we're having to try to do it out of our pockets with what we've got left over, there's not going to be any change left over. Don't you understand that? Don't you understand what the Federal Reserve and the situation with how our government is printing money left and right based on borrowed funds? what that's doing to everything that we have tried so hard to do these last few decades to help those people that are less fortunate than ourselves. You're going to be one of those people if you're not already. I'm tired of talking to 90% of the people I know who have been looking for a job for 13 months or longer and then being told on the news that things are getting better. I'm tired of looking at receipts from groceries I bought a year ago and the receipts from groceries I've bought this year and seeing it almost doubled and everybody telling me that everything's fine. It's not fine. You've got an electrical grid system that is the worst shape of any western country out there. Go over to Europe and look and see what their electricity looks like, what their electrical grids look like. We've been set up to lose our power. Our transformers are being built in China. They hate us, okay? They've built all of our transformers the last couple years. If your local electric company needs a new transformer, they have to order it from China. It takes a year. And we don't know how to work on it because we didn't make it. You've got cities in this country like Detroit who have fallen into shambles. You want to talk about a city that's got a ghetto area, that's got the, um, the hill or the other side of the tracks? It's the whole damn city. The whole city. We bailed out the automakers, and now look what happened. They're taking the business out of Detroit anyway. After all we yelled and screamed about a couple of years ago at Occupy about the bailouts, we still lost Detroit. Where's your anger in that? That's what I want to know. Where is your anger? Why are you pointing your anger at me? When I'm trying to stand up for you, why are you out there pointing your finger at the people that have been standing there with me? Why do you have a group of guys out in Nevada, 
okay, that are trying to separate us all. All of these trolls, all of this division, and you're going to buy into it? Don't you know? Don't you remember what we've done in the past? Well, I bumped into several Anons yesterday, and I bumped into a couple the day before. Thank you for being there. Thank you for doing what you can to help keep some of these videos up and running while they're trying to take live feeds down from the other end. I think more of you all need to pay attention to that and get in touch with some of your buddies. See what you can do to help. That's where I'm at, guys. So I'll be going back up there tomorrow. I'm going to get some more interviews and some more video. And as long as there is 12 people standing there, I will be there every time that I get a chance to head two hours up the road and two hours back home. I'll be up there several times a week. Anytime I can get up there more than that, I'll be up there. For as long as somebody is standing there, for as long as there is one Vietnam vet sitting there with his cane in his wheelchair and his oxygen tank wondering where everybody's at, I'm going to be there. And if you can't be there and you, do, you can't help on social media, organize something there. Get a couple of friends together. Do up some poster signs. What about Benghazi? What about Lois Lerner being in contempt of Congress? If you got in contempt of court, you'd be in jail. Think about that. You got a lady in Florida that was kicked out of her home because she was living off the grid. Her home was paid for. She had water. She had electricity. She grew her food. They kicked her out of her home for it. You got a dairy farmer who was trying to sell raw milk to people who willingly knew what it was, wanted it, asked for it, couldn't tolerate the milk in the stores. It's called irritable bowel syndrome. They created it. They gave it to us. He lost his farm. You got Harry Reid out in the desert surrounding a cattle rancher. Whether you want to believe if he owed the money or not, I could give a rat's ass. But when you find yourself in debt to a government that turns around and points guns, not only at you, but your family members, you might start paying attention then. You better pay attention before it happens. I know they wish they had.